Okay, just we're letting everybody into the room now. So um, just giving people just another quick minute to just come in and we're just gonna kick off in 10 seconds. Thank you everybody for joining. And I'm just going to stop my, so, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick off now and um, just to kind of save with bandwidth, I'm going to cut the video for the for the slideshow here. Okay, so just want to thank everybody for um, for coming along. I uh, hope everyone is having a great conference so far. Obviously, a bit of a different experience this year to last year, but I think um, as insightful as ever. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the innovation talk. So today's talk is on connecting the LMS to the skills um, economy. So our talk today, what I'm going to do today in our talk is, is show, basically show you what we at Innovation um, are using our latest talent development uh, solution or a talent to enhance our, um, our learning solutions for our clients around the world. This is, really, this is something we're really excited about, and it's really great to get this opportunity in front of all you kind of expert um, practitioners to to show you what's going on okay so just to kick off i think it's probably you know right that i introduce myself so i am mark melia i head up the product development function at innovation uh, my role principally is about working with you guys i suppose uh, learning and hr leaders to understand your challenges and basically build products um to ease some of those pain points. So um i don't come from a hr or, or talent background I come from a software background but I've just been totally, uh, a couple of years ago, totally fell in love with the area and have been with innovation for 10 years now. And I'm still enjoying the opportunity, the challenges, and the, just the pure, um, uh, um, pure, pure kind of interest that the HR community has in people. And, uh, and so that's, that's, that's what gets me interested in this area. So what about innovation? Who are they? Um, so we're innovation is an operation is a, is a company that's in operation for 20 years so obviously not a startup by any means uh, in that time we've principally been an e-learning company and we've built up a great pedigree in this uh, delivering learning solutions based on the moodle and total learning system so just before i go on so a lot of people may uh, may or may not have heard of moodle so moodle is actually the most popular learning management system in, in the world and it's available actually for free from moodle.org um, but a lot of people use Moodle partners like us to uh, provide Moodle services and to do things like hosting, training, and in integration. Totora then is a, a variant of Moodle. Basically, it's a corporate offering of Moodle. and includes things like performance management, learning experience platform, all that sort of good stuff. Um, we are actually one of the biggest learning Moodle and Totora partners in the world. And... Uh, we also have a badge of honor there, the ISO 27001 standard. We're actually the only Tatar partner with that standard. And that puts us essentially in a league of our own as, as one of these partners because we are able to service uh, the multinationals, the bigger companies that obviously have very high standards around data security and information security for their vendors. So that's what sets us apart. We work with big, you know, big companies and small, small companies. Some of the companies you might recognize are companies like Boston Scientific, Medical Device Company, Microsoft, Comfort Systems USA, which would be a, a HVAC, HVAC company, Fujitsu, Delta Airlines, Landmark Financial Solutions. Um, and in terms of where we operate, we have four locations, three of which are in Europe, and the other is actually in Houston. Uh, Candice McGlenn, one of our lead con consultants um, and very involved in the ATD there. Um, we'll actually be talking at 3 p.m. Just a, a quick plug for her talk, which is actually a very fascinating talk called Learning at the Speed of Change, Strategies for Advancing Talent Development in the VUCA World. This is a really interesting talk about how to manage talent management and um, learning in a, in a changing world. And I think we can all agree that this is a, this is a, this is a very much a changing world, a ch world that's in, in flux. And she's going to provide a great primer on that at 3 p.m. today. Okay, so all that kind of stuff out of the way, let's talk about the, the kind of body of this, um, of this talk. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is, um, if we look at the title, looking at a skills um, uh, economy, what are we talking about when we talk about a skills economy? So 
in this talk, we're going to have a very loose definition of a, a skills economy. When we speak of a skills economy in this discussion, we are talking about it in terms of a skills economy within a specific organization. This essentially represents a skills marketplace that is constantly evolving. On the one side, you have demand. What are the skills required by the organization in order for it to execute its strategy? And on the other side, um, I, I, or to execute the strategy, I should say that that is important both now and also into the future. So, you know, we need to look when we're strategizing, we're looking at what skills are we need right now? How do we, how do we do what we want to do right now? But also we need to have an eye on the future. What, how is the marketplace going to move so that we can capitalize on opportunities and defend against trends in the future? On the other side of the marketplace, you have supply. These are sk skills that are supplied by people in your business. These are the skills that people have, whether they're using them or not. So people obviously will ha may have skills that, they, that their role does not require, and we're, maybe we're missing an opportunity there. This is also represents the skills that employees have the potential for, how they can develop um, into certain roles or certain skills, and if they can step up into, um, and also perhaps skills that the employees are no longer interested in. So there's skills that people have within organizations that they actually don't want to use anymore. They're not interested in developing them further, or they, or they want to go. They want to progress in a in a in a different way. So, where does the LMS fit in this story? Okay, so the trusty LMS, it's a nifty piece of software. I think um, you know we've we've kind of been leveraging it for 25 years now in the uh, the community. I suppose just. Well, by the by, a fun fact, the first, first corporate LMS was developed um, in New Brunswick, Canada in 1994. Uh, and it was actually based on MS-DOS. Uh, guy's name was um, Roy McGreal. And uh, so there's there's something. If it ever comes up in trivia, you know where you got it. Uh, I think we've come obviously come a long way since then. And uh, now we, we essentially rely on this piece of software as an LD community to create engaging learning experience for uh, for learners. It's playing all sorts of content to our learners now, from SCORM to interactive video to tin can content. It understands things like what it means for learning activities to be, to, to be complete. We can track this to the minutia of details in the learning management system, even to the mouse click. If someone has clicked on uh, option A, then option B, then option A, we can analyze these things. The level of details is astounding from a learning management system now. Um, it allows basically it allows you to to define who does what when so allowing for things like compliance issues to disappear all these rules can be put in place so that uh, the learning management system essentially manages you know your compliance training your health and safety all that sort of good stuff and um, it also allows you to build curriculum paths and this is important for things like onboarding and um, creating timely relevant targeted training that's rolled out to new recruits to make sure that they're learning the right thing at the right time. And also it can be used to connect people connect to, uh, to the business. So the learning management system can, be all, can, can manage that whole experience for the, for the, new, uh, the, the new hire. The learning management system has also become um, pretty much an events management system. So all your instructor-led training can be managed through it, things to, down to waiting lists, room bookings, all that good stuff can be done. I suppose, you know, in more recent times, a virtual instructor-led training is probably more important. Uh, and it's connecting you to tools such as Zoom, GoToMeeting. It's a jumping off point to loads of different learning environments and learning tools. And how, obviously, from a compliance perspective, reporting is strong in a learning management system. We really have a good idea of who knows what, where. Um, and we can report that to the business, to compliance, whoever needs to know that. And finally, they have a really collaborative learning features now to get learners working together so it's a it's a nifty piece of software that served us well it's a great a great tool and it will continue to serve as well i don't i don't think the lms is going anywhere i think it's a very important tool for in our toolkit but it does have limitations so what does the lms not do the lms does not look at skills into the longer term understanding how skills evolve in people as their career evolves how people can be masters of their own destiny, essentially through learning and development. The learning management system doesn't really get that. Basically, how the, supply, how the skill supply can evolve over time and its potential. I suppose the, the potential in people. 
doesn't get that. The LMS is not connected with the organization strategy and in this way cannot help the LMP community in connecting the skills the organization needs to execute its strategy with the people it has. This being obviously the demand side of the equation. So if we look at the marketplace of the skills economy, on the one side, we have the individual with skills or the capacity for future skills or, and capability. And, and on the other side, we have the organization who requires skills in order to execute a value creation strategy or will require a skill into the short or medium term. The organization will pay for these skills and wish to ensure that there's a supply um, it, to draw from in the future. And the organization is going to invest in this, invest in, uh, need, but one needs to understand where to invest in these skills, who to invest in, and what the skills that they should be investing, what skills they should be developing, so that as old skills get less valuable, newer skills, um, new, more valuable skills can be utilized when required. This long-term development oversight is not what an LMS does. LMS can support in this exercise, as an important part of, it, of, this, of this. But in general, it's a more tactical tool in nature. And that is why we built Aura Talent to be a more strategic tool in the HR toolkit within the organization. So a common question is why we, why we bothered? Why, we, why did we go and bother develop, developing Aura Talent? And what motivated us to do that? To move from a learning space, which we are, we've been very successful in, We've been uh, built a lot of credibility in that area. Know, you know, know how learning works into the talent space. What was the reason? And the reason essentially is born the frustration we were seeing with our clients, both from the employee's perspective and HR. Employees were finding hard to, were finding hard to find new opportunities in their current company and were leaving the company as it simply was easier to do so to find new opportunities on LinkedIn and things like that than to find new roles that match with their career goals to their values, to the needs of their personal lives that are ever evolving. Perhaps they now have a family, they can't travel as much. It wasn't easy to find these opportunities. They, want, they have new skills or competencies or they're developing new ones and they wanna use them and it's not easy to find them. Or the job they have is not aligned to their interests and they want to find a role that is more aligned to their interest or their passion. And that is not an easy thing to do within a big organization, you know, with a sizable organization. It's easier to go on LinkedIn and find, you know, excellent recruiting marketing material to find roles outside the organization. From a HR perspective, there was frustration in the gap that HR data and learning data um, was not together. How progression and skills correlate and the insights that they can get from that is not easy to come together. HR data and learning data should live together, should be together so that we can understand the insights on how, what learning is moving the needle, what learning is changing people's uh, roles and allowing them to progress and what is not. So our talent allows us to draw out, draw on our learning pedigree, helping people figure out what is the right learning for them in order for them to develop in the right way. And I, you know, the right way is a, is a quite a, loaded term. So when we say the right way, we're saying the right way for them and their career today. And when we talk about their career, we're talking about those things, those values, those motivations, those uh, family circumstances, all those things. And when we say the right way for the organi organization, we're talking about a strategic tool that understands the strategy of the organization. We see that the missing piece in the development, in, in people development, linking learning development with strategic HR thinking, one that's exists within your existing HR ecosystem. It's not going to replace your learning management system. Your learning management system has a really important part to play in this overall uh, picture, but it is going to provide you with a more strategic tool to understand how to roll out training, you know, making sure that, that people are learning the right thing. So on this side, I'm just going to very quickly with the, the very few minutes remaining, I'm just going to very quickly show you what Aura Talent looks like to give you a, a very quick insight into kind of what we've been developing. And this is a tool that's built on competencies and skills, essentially. So it's giving people the opportunity to understand um, what competencies are associated with different roles and their current role and what the expected proficiency level is required of them. So in this case, we can look at Cathy Simmons who has a, a range of uh, core competencies and also has skills defined around their role. 
Um, now, we draw on multiple data points in order to facilitate this, which I'm not going to go into in, in this very short presentation. But as you can see, um, Cathy has a good understanding of what core competencies she has, the level of proficiency she has, and also this red arrow indicating where she should be. So there's a gap in her overall performance. We can then also look at um, the, the oh, oh, I have to log in again. Whoops. See, this is the uh, demo demons at play. We can also understand, if we go to the previous assessment cycle here, we can also understand who assessed what assessed Cathy in which way and gives us insights into, for example, blind spots. And this is what a lot of our customers are interested in, understanding where someone is very confident in a certain skill or competency, but their, um, their, their manager, their direct reports, their peers do not see them as, as, as high performance. maybe they see themselves. And this is a conversation piece in, them, in itself uh, between a manager and a direct report. And then, then we need to, if we have gaps there, if we understand that there is gaps, this is where we need to use the learning management system to help fill those gaps. So we have, we basically, we draw upon a, um, a, a individual development plan that allows someone to pick out certain competencies and uh, skills and basically pull learning and development from the learning management system, but it's centered around the role that they're in or the roles that they want to progress into so that they think can add um, um, content and learning, but also development activities that map the, uh, the, the learning and development that they do within the context of their e-learning to the role that they have to go back into. And we all, I suppose one of the other things that is a key part of the, the platform is to help people understand what options are available to them. So this allows them to understand what roles are important to your organizations. We have featured roles to understand what roles are important to your organization. So that, that so from a, I suppose, uh, so from, from me to progress into new roles, I understand what, what the organization is interested in, but maybe I don't know what's a good role for me. And this is where we use clever analytics to recommend progression to people so they can understand what options are open to them and how to progress into that role into that role by building development plans uh, for aspirational roles so they can develop in a, in a way that makes sense to them. So it's using analytics such as, you know, does it require travel? Is there uh, prerequisite conditions to move into that role? What's the competency profile of that role? How does it map to my, my competency profile? And then from, a, from the flip side, the organization then also gets um, an idea of who is a good match for a certain role. So we can look, we can flip it up, flip it on, the, on its head, and we can look at the competencies for a specific role, and we can see who's a good match to move into this role, but also we can see if there's roles, uh, if there's, there's a, a talent pool, for example, where there's a competency, where there's a gap for everybody. So for example, if we're looking for regional sales managers to recruit internally in the next, um, in the next, next quarter, we can see that this talent pool is a good talent pool, but we have a problem with teamwork and collaboration. This is an opportunity to roll out a workshop in this look, in this area, so that we can um, ex so we can build a talent pool that is a good resource for us to draw from in the future. So I just wanted to very quickly show you the product, show you the tool, to show you how we're doing. We're bringing strategy into the learning management system. We're hooking this, this, this tool hooks into your learning management system so that as a strategic overlay on top of it, it's also hooking into your HRIS. It's building data around all that so you can make clever decisions around what's going on in the organization. Um, so just to conclude, um, if you have any more questions or want to talk to me at all, that's my email address. If you want to learn more about either our talent or Moodle, Totora, learning management systems, anything in detail, as I said, I will talk to anyone. I'm really interested in this area and I love talking to people just to see what you're doing even. And then finally, Kansas Talk, 3 p.m., definitely not one to miss. Uh, learning at the speed of change, strategies for advancing talent development in a VUCA world. This is one that, um, you know, it's going to be a really interesting talk and one that I've uh, got a sneak preview to, to it. So I'm, I'm definitely telling people they should be at this session. So thank you very much for your time today. Really enjoy it. I hope you have a good rest of the conference and I will um, uh, see you in your sessions. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.
we've got some good um, information out in the chat, and I just want to point out one um, comment that was made from Rachel Harner, and she says, as an employee, I would really value a tool like this for learning relevant to my progression in the economy, ensuring I'm contributing to the strategic outcomes and would feel valued to have some choice in what I choose to learn based on my personal goal and circumstances. The product strategy aligns with progressive talent management philosophies like those explained in Patty McCord's book. Very powerful. Well, that is exactly the <laughs> mission that we were looking at. <laughs> like, it, it, basically, that's, you know, that's the pain point that we wanted to address here. And I'm glad that I'm, 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 I'm beaming with that comment. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And, and everyone, please uh, check out Candace's session at 3 p.m. Um, and um, we'll see you later in the conference. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Take care of yourself. Have a good conference. Bye-bye.